Angeles Talk Network. It's today's hottest topics with an added flair. You get ready because the conversation will be hot and better yet mobile. Download the New Orleans Talk Network app available on Android, iPhone, iPad, and you can listen to us on the web at www.neworleanstalknetwork.com. Write down our talk line at 504-341-TALK. That's 504-341-8255. Interactive and worldwide, that's what we are. Join in on the real conversation. Hi, I'm Sheriff Joe Lapinto, and you are watching the New Orleans Talk Network. This is Congressman Cedric Richmond, and you're watching the New Orleans Talk Network. Network. Folks, it's Wednesday morning, the third Wednesday of the month, I believe. It's September 19th. I just double-checked on that. Um, normally, as you know, we would be doing a chef's chat worldwide. Uh, we couldn't get, you know, it's been harder and harder to get some of the chefs. Uh, but we promise you we have one from the Philippines coming on next month. Uh, the farther the distance, even with the wonders of technology, there's still always some little kinks. As you've seen when we had the chef from India, the farther it is away, the harder it is to sync everything up. But we do have one coming for you next month, uh, so stay tuned for that. So as you know, our little new pride and joy, Artist Review, we substitute whenever we have the chance because we have so many artists out there who would love to get the opportunity to show you their work. They all can't, uh, you can't always go to their gallery or go to their particular website. So we bring it to you all around the world, these artists. Uh, and of course, we've been specializing in local ones, but uh, don't hesitate, just like we do at Chefs. We can take artists from around the world. If you want to show your work, and since everything's digital now and online, it's very easy. You do not have to be in the studio <coughs> using the... Uh, video chat technology you'll be sitting just like this young lady is right next to me even though you're not physically there and all your paintings will be shown uh, 15 or 20 of your paintings will be shown during the show for you to talk about and or sell if, if there's that opportunity so don't hesitate uh, if i contact you because that's what i do all day is look on on facebook and instagram for paintings uh, artwork as well as food and we make contacts and reach out to those individuals and if we can work out a suitable date for them, that's where we try and give them that opportunity. Okay, enough about bragging about the show. Uh, we want to introduce our local again uh, artist. Her name is Holly Lividay Cremens. Uh, welcome to the show, Holly. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Can't be more courteous than that, huh? Holly, why don't you tell us a little bit? The audience always likes to know a little bit about the guest. Uh, to make them feel a little more warm and comfy. So, tell, um, I, I always ask, because we're, we're partial down here in New Orleans to natives. Are you a native or no? I'm a native. All right, all right. Tell us a little bit about your your lifestyle and um, you know what, what drove you into this particular art. I've been doing artwork as long as I can remember. Okay. Uh, my uncle is an artist, my cousin's oh. an artist. Wow. And uh, I've been doing art all my life. My mom, uh, had breast cancer and passed away a couple of years ago and Sorry. made me promise to get back into artwork. Oh, wow. And she's the one who motivated What's me. the motivation? Yes. Well, I'm, I hate for that to happen to be, but the important yeah. thing is that kind of solidified it for you. Yes. Excellent, excellent. Now, your um, other uh, relative, your uncle, and I forgot who you said. Um, my cousin. Cousin. Are they painters well or they do other type of art? Like uh, sculpting? My, my cousin probably does, yeah, he does a lot of sculpting. Oh, good. Um, he was one of the teachers at LSU for a while. Wow, well, yeah. art professor. And huh? now he's working for the government, but um, okay. yeah, he well, does. Well, we love, I love sculpture myself and also and photography. And those two uh, photographers, that all, even when I had this show on TV, photographers were the hardest to get to come on. Huh? And the big deal is photography for years has always been in the shadow of art. People didn't want to recognize, well, you're not doing it, a machine's doing it. Right. So they never could get their prices appropriate to their into what they really were worth. They finally have come into recognition maybe five, five ten years ago. So we love, if you know any photographers or sculptors out there, we would like to, and not that uh, we don't enjoy the art, the visual arts, but at the same time, there are different things and... Um, to me, that takes it another step further, more of a 3D, like a sculpture thing. Uh, yeah. Photography, there's, 
There's a lot of them specialize in black and white, which makes every piece dramatic. You can look at a suho, well, well, I shouldn't say suho cover because those are valued here in the city, but you can look <laughs> at something that really would be considered trashy or junk, and a photographer can turn that into a piece of art. So, right. again, we welcome all artists here. Now, we're not ca capable for doing performance art like dancers and stuff like that. We just don't have the space for that. So it has to be limited to something, uh, sculpting, like I say, or photography or the visual arts. All right, now I know you seem to specialize in a certain medium and all. What, what is that, dear? I like to work with acrylic arts, and I like working with a lot of textures, different okay. textures okay. and mediums. What, what is your, how did you, or do you know how you decided to specialize in acrylics? What led you to that as opposed to um, I just like the way it works better. It stays uh, wet longer and um, really now yeah. you see just the opposite. What I've been what I hear is of course, you know, no. in the old days oil was the oil old. stays wet longer. Oh, uh, that's it, yeah. Yes, it does. And that's what I heard was the most common reason. Well also the colors are much more vibrant. And oils, I mean, you can get some of them, but most of them are a little darker. Right. Whereas the acrylics are always pop in your face. But the key was the drying time. Right. Oils would go on forever almost, seem like they yeah. could still be wet. Whereas acrylics dry in a short time. And, that's and I important. do like that they dry faster because you can work with it more. No, yeah, and not only that, of course, you make a, a bring them to marketplace quicker. Right. You know, because that's the key. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so you're following along with most of what I've heard from the artists themselves is that, uh, and I have to admit, I think it was a great discovery, whoever had, uh, found acrylics or created acrylics, because I think it certainly uh, brought uh, art back to its prime. It wasn't just the old stuffy master, masterpieces and classics like that. Right. It, it just has broaden the envelope right okay um well what we're going to do is you know we take our morning break for early so we're not disturbing too much and we take another break midway through um uh, we're probably going to do that now but when we come back we're going to tell you uh you know our pet special package and how you can if you decide to buy any of these pieces how you can acquire that so why don't you go ahead and take a look at our, our promos and commercials come on back to it say we'll actually start the fun part of the show okay What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. And can you believe that it has been one year since Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions hit your airwaves? We have interviewed authors, entrepreneurs, playwrights, musicians, and everyone in between, all to bring you the best of literary conversation. And we plan to do it again this year, but only better. So join us right here in the Literary Lounge each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. See you there. Hi, I'm Prophetess Charlene Duforce. And I'm Bishop Carol Duforce Sr. And we're from Living Witnesses Ministries. And we also uh, have a program on, on the internet uh, called Living by the Word Daily. And we're seen every Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 12 noon Central Time on the New Orleans Talk Network. And we would like to invite you to tune in with us every Wednesday morning again 11 to 12 noon, Central Daylight Time. Please join us as we teach the Word of God. Thank you, and God bless. God bless you. We're back. Talk What You Know returns on Wednesday mornings at 8 a.m. We got a brand new co-host by the name of Bob B. And hey, that's me. Also, we got some new features. We're going to be giving away have a weekly raffle of prizes. Uh, there are multiple ways for you to win, and there's a bevy of prizes. So we need you to come on back, join us on Wednesday mornings at 8 o'clock for Talk What You Know on the New Orleans Talk Network. Welcome back. It's Wednesday, uh, third Wednesday, and no chefs today. 
We've got artists. Artist review, our, our newest feature, and we've really been uh, exploring it, exploiting it to you all, exploding with all the fabulous work that we are able to see that these artists are producing. We're pleased to have, as we mentioned earlier, a local artist again today, Holly Liberday Cremens, and she's come in and brought her works, and we're just about ready to start. I uh, want to tell you two things. One is you can buy any of these pieces from Holly Direct. And during the, uh, well, we're going to ask her for a minute to give us her phone number and her email address. She has PayPal. She has different sources for you to do it. So, um, uh, is, oh, did, did he have it up on the screen now? Is it? No. When he puts it up, we will call it out loud to you, but it'll be on the screen, so if you watch the show again, you can take it down. Or you can always do mine, as you know. If you contact me through uh, email bob at rreview.net, we'll put that back up as well, then I will certainly give you the appropriate information so you can speak to Holly directly. Now, what we're going to be showing you today are all originals. So these are not prints, prints at all. But Holly has condescended to allow us to do our standard package. And we're going to repeat this at least one more time during the show, whereby if you like any of these pieces, and perhaps it's a little bit out of your budget or whatever, um, if you would just like it on beautiful cardstock, we will give you an 11 by 17, and we only charge you $20. No shipping costs, no tax, no uh, uh, any of the other fees. So that's a, a great, great bargain. Um, and uh, we have those other things we can put it on canvas and frame it for you if you like. But also you'll see as we go down Holly's work that near the end, her pieces are smaller than some of the bigger pieces and the prices are so affordable. It's, well, gee, you know, why would I buy a print when I can get that original for my directly for just uh, a few dollars more? So, um, uh, oh my all right, so we're going to go ahead and give you that information real quick. I'm not sure what Mike's telling us, but um, she's going to give you her email address and our phone number that you can reach her directly. So let's go ahead and do that now. It's Holly Clements. And that, let's spell it for me. H-O-L-L-I-E. I-E, not Y, folks. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's an I-E. Clements, K-R-E-M-E-N-T-Z at okay. gmail.com. Okay. Now, is there, before we go any further, is there any... Holly Cremens, is there a punctuation between like a period or no, a, so Holly it's Crimmins one word, yes. Holly Cremens, H-O-L-L-I-E-K-R-E-M-E-N-T-Z at gmail.com. Correct. Okay. Do you want to give your phone number or just give the email? Sure. Address? It's 504 Okay. 338 6187 504-338-6167. 6187. Oh, pardon me. See? 504-338-6187. Okay, or the email. And then again, you can always contact me if you forget that or whatever at bob at rreview.net. Don't forget, we had to change to .net. It used to be for 15 years, it was .com until the Chinese people got a hold of it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, no, I, my, and we don't want to hear that story. Anyway, so either way, through those ways, you can either go indirectly to me and I'll put you through to uh, Holly, and then you can work with her with regard to your purchase uh, options, all right? Or you can go to us, and again, you can do PayPal if you want with us. You can, we would rather, we just take even personal checks. That's how trusting we are, all right? For the, because we're only talking about $20 on, on if you buy the card stock. All right, now we're going to start with uh, Holly's first piece. And again, this is a beauty. Tell us a little bit. Now, this is really, I think, local. These first two we're going to see are really localized to New Orleans. They really speak home to one of our most important things, our culture, our music. Tell us about this, please, Holly. I call this home base. Home base. Very it's nice. acrylic and uh, texturing on canvas. It's mm -hmm. a 24 by 30. 24 by 30. And notice when she says home base, she's not talking about football, I mean baseball. There's no E. She's talking about B-A-S-S. -S. Is that right? Right. There you go. There you go. Bass guitar. So what a beauty there. And like I said, how appropriate for New Orleans to signify in beautiful tones, um, the, the gorgeous blues in that background. Now, and you said, what was the size on this again? It's 24 by 30. So it's a nice size, two, almost two feet by <coughs> almost three feet. So it's a, a nice long vertical. And what are you asking for this? What's the asking price on, on this original? Uh, this one's 350 350 okay, $350, folks. All right. Uh, so there's one where 
you know, if you went, went to print route, you'd be saving quite a bit, and you got the beautiful, not as good as and vivid and textured as you'll get on the original, and not on canvas, so... But anyway, there's the first. Let's look at the second one, because it's along the same vein, I'm saying, as New Orleans music, but even another instrument that's uh, identical. Can we see that one? Let's see. There we go. Look at that, folks. Look at that keyboard, huh? Almost looks like an accordion, the way it's been around. Right, right. Tell us a little bit. You got a name on this one as this well? This one's called Heavenly Tunes. Heavenly Tunes. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, tunes. I really enjoy doing these. This one's in acrylic and texture also on canvas. Uh -huh. And um, And size-wise? It's It's a... I don't have the size written down. Okay, all right, no problem. Well, yeah, it's 24 by 24. Oh, 24 by what? 24. 20, oh, so it's almost square. Right. Or oh, it is square, not almost. I it is square. Almost. It is square. So that's a nice size, two feet by two feet. Uh, once again, this is perfect for home or office. It'd be beautiful in your, in your waiting room if you have an all in your own your private office, or if you know anyone. Well, just all of us are interested in music here in the city. So. A great feature somewhere on a wall in your home because uh, I think everyone will probably. I'm really impartial to that to that keyboard. I think that's so intriguing how you're able to snake snake bend it and uh, still get the same interest with regard to recognizing it as a, as a keyboard. Okay, so that one's called Heavenly Heavenly Tunes. Tunes. All right. All right. Uh, let's move on, now, and uh, we're getting away from the music vein. Let's see what we have now, because Holly does a lot of abstracts, which I love, uh, but she also mixes it in with uh, details just like we've seen there. Let's see what we have for our third venue. Uh, there we go. This one's called Mystical. Okay. And Tell us a little I bit about this. I went to Hawaii. Oh, and, lucky you. Um, yeah. I before, really the, the uh, before the uh, volcanoes. Before the volcanoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, so that inspired me to do this one. This oh. one's 24 by 24. Okay. And um, it's 350. All right. And that's on canvas like the on others, canvas, right? On uh, canvas, yes. Stretch canvas. A lot of texturing. And what was the size of what we're telling them? 24 by 24. Okay, so again, that's a square one. That one didn't look as square as the first one, but again, right. and that's my old eyes. So, uh, all right, so we got two beauties in there. Couldn't get anything more pretty to see the uh, lovely blues of the waters of uh, Hawaii before it started yeah. getting all that lava, lava fill. All right, let's go on to uh, our third one. In fact, I'm going to follow along here like I should be doing uh, and uh, see what else. And you said that one was 350. Yes. Okay. All right. Why don't we take a look at our next one? Do we have it up there, Mike? Okay. And what do we get? What do we want to say about this? This one I call Midnight. Midnight. All right. I and like uh, it's twenty-four by twenty. Okay. Uh, two fifty, and um, I, I did a lot of acrylics and um, texturing, and uh, I can't okay. think of other stuff. All right. But I Kruskowski guess Kraskowski crystals. Oh, you have crit. So you're adding. Um, so it's really become a mixed media. Yeah. Is that you're adding the crystals? Yeah, they too? got a lot of mixed media in this one. Oh, I didn't. I, oh, okay. But well, I hadn't. I hadn't discussed that with you, and I thought everything was strictly the, the paint itself. So you yeah. actually have. Oh, great! This is it's beautiful. Got silver leafing in that one too. Silver leaf. Well, yes. well, and how much did you say? This, this is the bargain having all that. Two forty. Two hundred forty. It seemed to be the. Um, the bargain basement of the group, folks. You've got crystals and you've got uh, silver leaf. Right. Well, you can't can't get a painting more up, upscale than adding that. And that was the 24 by 20. Is that right? Right. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the next one? What do we have? All right. Tell us about this one, please. This one's Holly. called Cotton Candy. Cotton Candy. All right. And it also has mixed media. It's got a lot of acrylics and. Uh, Texturing, uh, silver leafing, and oh, um, all that the Swiskowski crystals. All that? All that on there. Well, you're really, you really dolling them yeah, up, Yeah, I enjoy huh? doing that one. Let's see. I just can't get these up here. Okay. Um, and what, what was the size and the price on that? This one's 24 by 24, and okay. it's $240. So you're kind of specializing in the two, 24 by 24 no, or 20 by 200 two. sorry oh 200, 200. really oh they're yes. getting even less expensive we're going there we're adding more and getting, <laughs> coming down on the price but i'm saying you kind of gravitated toward either 24 by 24s or 24 by 20s yeah. which are a nice size a nice very nice size so uh let's see where we are on the scale let's bring something up folks what else we have mike okay this one is called nature's shimmer Nature's Shimmer. Well, that's a good it's one. It's acrylic painting, 
on canvas and it, it has uh, some texturing on there with some it's made out of eggshells and branches what? wow this, this is, was a challenging piece what was it called again nature's shimmer oh so that's so that's why you incorporated the branches and what was the other leaves no what was the other no name? it's eggshells eggshells and some uh so you cr like cracked them up? Is that what you did? Uh, yeah, it was a process. Wow. How in the world did you think of that? Uh, seen it on uh, live. Somewhere. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wasn't that your inspiration? But uh, but what a great idea, to, again, to give this the uh, the 3D effect. So here's another um, mixed media one, folks. Uh, and again, uh, what was the size and the price? This one is, um, this one, what's one of your 24s or something? Oh, that's my place. 18 by 24. Okay. And it's 250. 250, okay. Well, that's great. So that on was nature. Canvas. I'm saying on Canvas. All of them are on Canvas, right? Yes, all of them are on Canvas. All right. All right, let's see then. Let's see if we can uh, find the uh, the next one. I, I still have trouble. Go ahead and show us. What, what do you got here, Holly? This is a big abstract. It's acrylic um, paints on canvas. Okay. So and 24 by 24, and it's $290. Okay. And any name on this one at all? No. Okay. Let me see if I can see the color. My problem is I can't. Uh, yep. Teals, blues, pinks, white, black. Okay. And how about any kind of orchestration on it? Like you've. Uh, no. No addition on it. So we're. At, so let's see. That was that. That's. I'm trying to get caught up in this cotton candy natures. This is this one here we're talking about? Yeah. Is that the one we're yes. talking about? And what is it called again? That one um, doesn't have a name. Oh, an well, I love it because it's like a patchwork. I mean, it doesn't look like a quilt. Right. But I mean, it's like uh, it's an abstract. Yeah, but it's but a lot of people think abstract where you really can't identify. It's like you know, it's it's, it's all painted. It's oh, okay. hard to recognize. These have definitive objects in it, or looks like definitive objects. Right. Uh, so Shapes. it's like a what I would call a collage, even sure. though it's not different. It's all done with. With the acrylic, right? There's no, right. Add, you said nothing added to it. But uh, really cute, cute idea. And I love the focus of having the uh, the circle in the center with the, like, looking like rhinestones to or camera's eye in the center. Really cool. Uh, tell you, this would be great for almost all ages, but I specifically think like a, a young lady's room. I right. think it would just be perfect. And it's not too much where it's on the baby side, you know, child is more like the adult, young adult, and uh, but then can be transferred after he or she leaves on uh, into any area. So really nice. And the price on that one, one more that time. That one's uh, two fifty. Two fifty. Okay. So again, you see, folks, how reasonable how prices are for the originals. So. All right. Now the next one. Let's see if we can bring in the next one up. Ah. This one's called Fire and Ice. This is interesting, folks, because this is a, a three for one that you can either buy individually or collectively. Is that correct? Correct. But it's all unified. That was the whole idea when you were doing it. The inspiration of Fire and Ice. Is that right? Yes. All right, let's go over each one. If uh... The first one is 20 by 16. Okay. They're all acrylic on canvas. Right, and what are your tones there? Of, okay. Oh, this text, what kind of, t are you adding on to anything on this? Is it mixed media or just it's art? Uh, just it's just texturing and acrylic paints. Okay. But this, to me, would be where all the fire would be. I mean, uh, I don't see a lot of ice, and maybe it's my bad eyes on this first they one. They have some here. white in there. Okay, okay. The and ice. you said, what size is that one again? These are three different sizes. The first, no, the one, first is one is 20 by 16. The okay, second no. one is 12 oh, by 12. Slow down, slow down, Holly. All right, so now we're going to go take a look at, if Mike can bring them in, we're going to look at the second one, which is the middle one. Right. And uh, which size is that? That one's 12 by 12. So that's a smaller square. And then the last one is what size? It's 20 good. by 10. Oh, yeah, because it looks a little narrower than the first. And they're all under the title Fire by Ice. Now, one more time, let's go over the prices individually. The largest piece on the left is what? It's 160. Okay, the middle, smaller? 72. All right, 72. How do you get a $2 price today? I don't know. And then <laughs> how about that last one? 100. Okay, so very real. So any one of the three would be great. Together, they really are knockouts. So this would certainly be a, a living room wall or a, a den wall, something really uh, where you or even over a bed it'd be great because uh, it gives you a lot of expanse okay and this is one of my favorite of her abstracts and again it's a two-piecer instead of three-piece but instead of being side by side like most triptychs or dual panels she's got them vertical top and bottom and 
to me, they're coordinated by the color, not necessarily by the subject matter. Do you have a, a name on either or both of these pieces? Yes, I call it the Canary Series. The Canary Series. How, how did we get that, huh? Yeah. And uh, what, uh, they look like they're the same size each. What is that? Those are 20 by 16. Okay, you look more square, but 20 by 16, both Acrylic on canvas. on canvas. Now, all of them are strictly the paints, or do any, either one of them have any kind those, of addition? Those have gold leafing on them. Gold leaf? Yes. So, like... The uh, top one has gold leafing. Oh, just a touch. Would that be the center part? Or where would yes, it, the yeah. center part is the gold leaf. You can leaf. see because of the shine to it, so that's beautiful. Right. So, that's called... And the, the bottom one has some uh, texturing on it. So that's called Canary Series. Now, uh, individually, how do they run price wise? 160. How many? Each. 160 well, each. 160 each. Okay, excellent. Well, really nice. Now, folks, I love, I like geometric. So uh, even though it, I, she did a great job by coordinating the colors to be able to put something that's totally abstract in the bottom with something that's much more definitive with the vertical lines and stuff. And it goes extremely well. So it's not like really. Uh, Oh, that's just put together, you know. It right. really, really looks very well coordinated. But I'm real partial to that top one. I just think it, it just really. And I guess it's the gold it leaf because it. it has so much pop since it's right there in the center, you know, in, in, in format. Okay, uh, so let's see one more. Well, I think we're yeah, we still got a couple more before we take our break. No, in fact, this is the one I believe. This is about halfway through, so we'll need to the next take our one, break. I think. Yeah, this one here. the one we're going up to. This is a I call a triptych, which means it's three panels. So, and again, all of these, all folks, all of these are on canvas. None of them, sometimes when you see these panels like this are on wood, but yours are all on canvas. Yes. Is that correct? And acrylics. Tell us, is there a name for this triptych? I call it trifecta. Trifecta. Okay. Three, and they're four by twelves each. Four by twelve. And four by twelve. Really. Yes. So only looks they look wider than four inches. Yeah. Only four inches, you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, you are sure. But it, you can see the coordination as it flows, folks. It's almost like a tree on the left with infinity, but it, like its branches go out to the, so that you can see them reaching toward the right, bringing it in more information, and then like the rest of the paint. So it, it look you know if you look at it as an overall piece, it looks like one piece with regard to that you're looking at either outside in a forest area. Or so, so trifecta, I'm not sure I get anything related to horses or anything, but maybe you use trifecta just because it has the three panels. Right. But the colors are great. Uh, is that any gold leaf in that? Because There's gold leaf in. Because uh, I can see, again, the shade of gold really pops in and usually means gold leaf. Anything else? Any uh, crystals? Oh, no. 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 Okay. Gold leaf, acrylic paints. That's it. I mean, you don't have to. Have, you don't want to be the same thing on everything, but uh, really works on this because each piece has a little bit of gold to pop it, and the great colors of purples, grays, uh, whites, etc. All right. Um, now again, if if we were to buy, do you do a pricing where like if it's a package, you buy all three? This one or you is just, a package. Deal. Okay. Okay. So what, what 60 would be the bucks for three? How much? Sixty dollars for all three. Sixty? Yes. For all three. For all three. Wow. They come you together. sure? I'm sure. <laughs> well, folks, that's the bargain of the century. I thought she was going to say 60 each, which would have been uh, bargain enough. I, uh, we can hardly beat that, folks. So you see, if you want to, I mean, I, I know we can give you this for 20, but it would be $20 for each one of the pieces, not all three. So uh, by the time you buy six, if you wanted to buy all three on paper, you'd be paying the same price as what you're paying for the original. So they, you can't beat that. This is this is really the bargain, as they say, the bargain of the day. Uh, if, you, if you've got $60 or can work it out on PayPal or one of the things with her, you can't beat this because this can go just about anywhere. Just magnificent colors and three pieces. Just really good. Four by, four by what was the length, 20? Four by 12. By 12, four by 12. So it's not the largest piece, even though it gives you that depth because of the expanse by putting the three panels together. All right, what we're going to do is uh, you know, a little early, but we're going to go ahead and take our break. And then when we come back, we're going to finish up talking to Holly Liberday Cremins and seeing more of her work. We're hoping that uh, you're finding, because you can see she's very diverse. She's got a lot of abstracts, which I like, but she's enhancing a lot of her work with regard to uh, collage stuff, whether it's textures through eggshells and uh, leaves or branches, whatever, or to the up upscale, to the gold leaf, silver leaf, Savorsky crystals. I mean, what more can you get in a painting, right? So anyway, interesting is that tune us back as soon as you see these promos, and we'll pick it up from where we left off, okay? Hey, Bob. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to let you know that uh, someone's interested in uh, 
second uh, photo. Okay, can, piano keys. that's Mike, our producer, and he keeps track of if somebody calls or sends a text. So um, you're saying uh, someone has expressed an interest in, in which one, Mike? Uh, the piano keys one. Oh, the, one, the, one, the, which I said was one of my favorites. The uh, What was the name of Heavenly Tunes? Heavenly Tunes. Heavenly Tunes. Heavenly Tunes. And uh, are they opting for the... Um, for the paper print as opposed to the original? What, is, what are uh, they doing? I'm not sure yet. Uh, okay. Yeah, you, you have to, uh, they're going to contact All right. Well, we'll talk to them later and see then, okay? Uh, their name is Edward. Edward? Okay. Thank you very much, Michael. So, great. Holly, you got on sale. So Thanks, Edward. Somebody's following my suggestion. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> again, let's go ahead and take our break. Thanks again, Mike, for that interruption because that's the kind of interruptions we love. Let's, see, let's catch you on the other side, and then we'll pick it up from where we left off. Listen up. Your customers, our listeners, could be hearing about your business right now. Yeah, right now. Don't miss out on the opportunity to advertise with NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. Call our business department today at 504-475-4793 to hear about our great rates. NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. We provide the people, you provide the business. Are you looking for a home to live stream your next event? Give us a call here at Bethesda Community Event Center, the only place on a golf course that can host and broadcast live your wedding reception, your baby shower, business seminar, and any other special event. Give us a call at 504-708-9454 for more details. Happy Merry Mondays. It's your girl Mary J. I want you to tune in with me to Real Talk with Mary J on New Orleans Talk Network every Monday morning at 10 a.m. Then follow me to blogtalkradio.com slash Real Talk with Mary J at 10 p.m. It's going to be a Merry Monday every Monday at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. You've just tuned in to New Orleans Talk Network. Hi, I'm Sheriff Joe Lapinto, and you are watching the New Orleans Talk Network. Welcome back. We're halfway through our Wednesday edition, third Wednesday of the month edition of Artist Review, subbing for Chef's Chat Worldwide, which we're happy to do whenever we can to bring an artist in. And usually on those days, we bring a... Um, uh, a local artist because it's a lot easier to obtain the local artist to get in in, in short period of time when we're substituting. But don't hesitate if you're an artist out there anywhere in the U.S. or in the world and you want to be on the show and, and present your work, contact us. And you know you can find me on Facebook under my full name, under the New Deal. Or you can contact me by by the email. There it goes. Bob at R-R-E-V-U-E dot net. Remember, it's .net. It's hard because it's not a Gmail and stuff. Everybody's so geared to that. Goes through my website, our review, and .net is the replacement for the .com that we had to move from. Okay, we're back with our local artist Holly Livade Cremens, and she's been showing her a vast ability of putting, working with strictly acrylics and canvas, and creating some. Uh, beautiful defined work uh, as well as abstracts and then enhancing some of those with things from nature as well as upscale different kind of uh, accoutrement accessories so really giving you uh, a mixed media in some of these and and at really bargain prices but one more time we're going to do this tell you if you decide on any of these pieces like uh, what was it Edwin I think the guy's name yeah uh, first they decided um, just call in or t at our number to Mike or text something on the thing. Mike will pick it up in your name and which one you want. And um, we'll go from there. Now, if you want to buy it directly, like one of the great originals, like that last bargain, $60 for all three pieces on Canvas, you can contact Holly Direct at Holly, H-O-L-L-I-E, Cremens, 
K-R-E-M-E-N-T-Z, all one word, at gmail.com, okay? Right. Or you can call us, 504, give us that number one more time. 338-6187. Okay, 338-6187. Or bob at allreview.net through me or through the station, and I'll put you in touch with her, and she'll give you our options with regard to PayPal, stuff like that, okay? All right, let's get back to it because we've still got, like, I think 10 more we want to get through before the end of the day. Let's take a look at our next one, Mike. What do we have up there? Tell us a little bit about this, Holly, please. This is acrylic texturing. Uh, it's a, called acrylic pouring, <coughs> really. Acrylic what? Uh, uh, it's acrylic pouring. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, on uh, canvas. Yeah, this... Uh, this is a 12 by 12. Okay. And it's uh, $40. Okay. Let's. I want to give... Uh, you know, sometimes we talk uh, shop... Tech talk, whatever you call it, and you know people don't understand. It's not their fault because it's just like everything. Uh, people get get more and more nomenclature, and more and more semantics about things, more and more specialized. So in the old days, an abstract was anything that was really li like not specifically defined, and not a painting, a portrait, stuff like that. But now they've come on. Depending on how you do your abstract, your methodology. Are different now one of the, is called the pouring technique and why don't you explain that? i mean i think it's simple enough but go ahead and tell us what is a pouring technique in abstracts well you just mix different uh layer different acrylic paints and uh, but do you actually just pour it as opposed to using a brush yes you pour it in ah. and uh pour a medium and you just pour it on right and so th you can tilt the canvas different ways. Right. But, you you know, some people will take that, they'll pour it or they'll splash it on, and then they'll take other devices, knives or brushes, right. and move different things. And But this purest pour, <laughs> the purest pour technique is strictly pouring it on there and then moving your canvas around for the liquids right. to blend together and mold in different ways, etc. Is that right? Yes. And that's what this one is, right? Yes. One more time, let's go over the specifics since we had to go to the to the uh, uh, encyclopedia of explaining or the dictionary of explaining okay. what a pour technique is. This it's, is 12 by 12. Okay. And it's acrylic pouring. Okay. And um, it's $40. And uh, is that a blue or a purple background? That's purple, black, white, gold. Now, any accoutrement? Is that gold? Uh, any of the leaves? Or is it just plain just gold? Just gold. Just gold. And notice, so what she accomplished there, folks, is just pouring it on there and then moving the canvas around. It's just really great. Really great. Uh, all LSU fans. Oh, there you go. Well, <laughs> uh, you're going to turn me off. I graduated in Tulane. Anyway, what, <laughs> what's the size on this? Again, 12 by? 12 by 12. So it's a nice even square. And the p price was, again, what was the price? $40. $40, folks. Wow. That's tw just twice the price of what we would give it to you in print. So, I mean, on, on cardstock. Very nice. Okay. Now, here's another one using almost the same colors, but, ooh, much more depth on this one. And it almost looks like butterflies or flowers. It's like a flower, I think. What, what, do I you use have different tools to make this. Okay. Tool. And uh, is there a name at all or no? No. Just okay. It's a 12 by 12. Uh-huh. And did you pour it too? Or no, what did you... this is not a pour. I just used tools. Yeah, when you say tools, Gold other tools. than a brush, give people a little idea what no kind of No brushes. Tool. Uh, yeah, okay. I did use a brush. Okay. I used a brush. But in addition to that, what else did you use? Spatulas. Oh, so like spatulas. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, really, really nice. I mean, like I say, I can see a beautiful flower stem at the bottom and then uh, some petals, one at the top going to the east and the left, right, and another one there, and then a stem, in, which is the center sticking out. So, like almost like a, not a gladiolus, I can't think of, like a lily or something, an iris, not iris, I don't even have bad on names. Uh, but really great colors, and I love the way you, the, the you know, I don't think you delivered, the perimeter is all like in a black background, so it kind of gives it a 3D it's effect. It's purple, purple. Oh, it's purple? Different shades of purple and Oh, gold. well, but yeah, it came out so dark, it almost looked black, so yeah. it almost kind of frames it like there's a built-in frame to it. And what's the price on this one? $40. $40, wow, folks. We're really hit, hitting rock bottom, huh? Now we're going back. <laughs> now we're going back to something a little bit more defined, as opposed to abstract. Beautiful symbols you'll recognize right away. Just very soothing colors. I love this. It's different tones on basically the same color. Do we have a name on this one? This is just an angel. An angel. Ah, there we go. I thought that was a heart. That was a heart. But those are the wings of the angel. You see the angel in the center. Is that right? Is that the wings? Yes. Beautiful. And then the. Uh, Piece is just now the centerpiece looks like a um, 
Is that some type of symbol or something? The circular part at the top. Or is that just her face? Um, it's a halo. Halo. Oh, it's a halo. Okay, makes sense. I'm not even thinking. And again, what kind of colors are these? Because that's, that's uh, teal and silver. Ah, uh, okay. I have to say it's like a teal green or blue, whatever they call it. And, and you've added silver to it. Now, is there any silver leaf in this or just silver? Just silver paint. Just silver. And this is done all by brush or some other combinations? No, I used tools of spatula okay. and I made that. Okay. And what's the color? One more it's about got angels? It's got acrylic. Okay. Uh, paints on right. canvas and uh -huh. it's got different texturing in it and uh it's a 12 by 12. 12, by 12. that's 12 no that can't be 12 by 12 huh 12 by 16 sorry. yeah because you can see it's 12 longer 12 by 16 yeah very nice and what's the price of that fifty dollars very nice so uh a, a non-religious religious painting you would call it okay because got to be a little spiritual not necessarily religious to believe in angels but you know like last week when we had our friend robin denon from the uh the psychic talking about how people have angels surrounding them from, that have predeceased them, which was just fascinating to me. So he would be a great person like that. I'm gonna have to send this to Robin and maybe she would uh, be interested. It'd be a great lo additional logo for her. Really, really pretty as our medium stuff. All right, now let's see if we can move on. What's the next one we got coming up? All right, ah, this might be a religious one as well. Uh, it's basically, I, I'm hoping that that's a crucifix in the center. I call it a spiritual being. A spiritual being? Yeah. Okay. And the cross. A cross, yeah. So it definitely is a crucifix or a cross. Now, um, what is the size on this one? That one is uh, 16 by 20. Oh, that's a typical standard size for frame, 16 by 20. And I love the color scheme. So the back is like a teal, but with uh, what's the what's the process on here? Is it pouring, or what is it besides the brushwork? No, I used a uh, spatula. Spatula again, okay. Tool to um, do different techniques on it with okay. gold leafing. Oh, we have gold leaf on the one. Wow. Yes. And are the, are the symbols on the cross anything in particular? Or no. Just, no. Okay. Very nice. It's again. just painting. Yeah. Generic. Just beautiful. But you. And, but the the cross itself does have a, a look of wood, you know, the colors right. there, even though it may not be intended to be wood, but really, really stands out. So here's one, like, again, a generic spiritual one, not necessarily for a particular religion or no. something. We're not trying to... We're not uh, trying to preach that we have religion, but just a beautiful framework on it, really. And what was the price on this one? That one's $80. 80 16 by 20 folks, $80. Can't beat that. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to another one. Now, this looks like a square, nice square. This almost looks like tiles, the way you got defined in the background. It looks like a tile work, yeah. like you would see. Well, tell us about this one. This is a beautiful blue butterfly. It's 12 by 12 on canvas and I uh, use texturing and I use different spatulas to mm -hmm. get the different shapes. Well, you can see the butterfly there down in the almost center, a little bit off center, huh? Right. Beautifully done. But the background itself, it was, I mean, do you see what I'm saying? It's or am texturing, I, yes. That it it's almost a, looks like tiles, and <laughs> almost yes. square, but so it really gives a great uh, impression, sort of like, again, a, like a, 3D. a 3D look. Yeah. Exactly. But there's no, and there's no accessories on this one, strictly the acrylics. Right. And 12 by 12 square. And what are we asking on this one? This one is $40. 40 uh -huh. Well, that's a lovely, very soft for a bedroom or for even a restroom or just any place where you want a nice, soft, soft mood. I think that's a great mood piece, you know, without saying that because the uh, butterfly is so embedded in it that it's not a standout kind usually when they'll put a uh, an insect or something that's pretty they'll really put it in dynamic colors so it, it, it's the focal point right, right here it's not it blends in the back the painting itself so to me that makes it even nicer because it's it's just a smooth texture all coordinated colors very very nice okay <clears throat> now we're going back to the really abstract uh, take them a little brighter than always moving away from the purples and golds but going into the blues and the whites tell us about this one this one is an acrylic pouring also pouring okay there we go it's a 12 by 12 all right and it's also forty dollars forty dollars and any name no no this is really cool because it's got teals whites black gold right yeah there's a down a on the bottom, uh, let's see, on your screen, and probably your right, on the bottom right corner, uh, for those, and just the overall, the way the pourings came out, uh, there was a famous artist, Nagan, N-A-G-A-N, I believe, who was popular in the 80s and 90s 
and his work was very stylized. Stylized was like Art Deco, where everything was angular, sharp, stuff like that. And I see that in him. And in fact, he would always do a lot of his portraits had a a, a woman who was devoid of any color except for maybe a bright lipstick, but angular face and the black hair. And that almost looks like to me the beginning of this painting. That it looks like if you've ever seen an Egan, uh, it looks like if a portrait side of a face of one of his paintings that go back in like this one might be a hair or something in the back really cool because it's really very stylized and like I say it's not Art Deco what we think of Art Deco where it's uh, but the whole concept of Art Deco is the stylization the very sharp angular geometrics and stuff like that really nice and this was what 40 or higher it's 40 dollars 12 by 12 can't beat it can't beat it okay now taking those same colors just pull it extracting the white from it now this to me looks like really a pour like you all oh, throw it against the wall i saw some artists will take a balloon full of paint and they'll <laughs> throw it on them and it pops Didn't and that's that. what it looked like to me is that it hit to the center and then split but it went out in such great forms that it's just magnificent is there a name on this one no this is uh, uh just teals and golds different blues Okay. And um, and do we have a, uh, a size again? 12 by 16. Okay. And is this a pouring technique or something else? N this is not a pouring technique. No pouring. Just the a, opposite. I okay. use the brush and yeah. different tools. Yeah. Well, that's why you I think you're able to get such definitive lines like going, you know, vertically and horizontally as opposed to, right. which would be a lot more squiggly if you did the uh, pouring technique. Right. But great colors. Great depth again because the darker colors pulling you into that lighter background. It really, really effective, very effective. And what's the price on this? Twelve by sixteen, so it's gonna be a little bit more. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars, yeah, still a bargain. Okay, now we're gonna kind of get like a hybrid of that first one before that, and the one and the next one. We're using either blues or blacks or purples, but again Blue, a lot of black, mm -hmm. gold, white. Was the background all black, or how did this work? No, it no. wasn't. Okay. This is an acrylic pouring also. Another pouring, okay. And um, what color? All of them are varnished. Oh, you do? All, I, all you the didn't pictures say are varnished, yes. Oh, fantastic. Well, that gives it a little protection as well as getting a little sheen to it, huh? Right. So now, um, the the background is uh, a black background or is black paint? Is it's that what I'm saying? blues and blacks, blacks and golds and, and the gold. white. Okay. And, and the size? 12 by 16. 12 by 16. And it's $50. Another 50. So there you go, folks. You got some good. Now we're coming near the end. And uh, again, I'm, I hate to say it, but I'm partial to these next two again. Uh, one, because uh, let's go ahead and hopefully, did Mike put up the second last one? Ah, here we go. This is to me, the colors, are just, it, it almost, this really looks floral. It looks like tulips growing in, in the field, especially one on the left where the <coughs> leaves are parted and on the stems and just golden background for the sun. The yellows and the blues, the traditional French colors you know, with a little touch of white. And even though it's an abstract, it really looks to me like a well, well done floral. Can you tell us about any name or anything about it? To hopefully, hopefully agree with what somebody said instead of tearing it down. This one is a, a pouring technique also. Wow. And wow. yeah, it has blues, yellows, well, white. I'm so amazed you were able to get so definitive with the because the pourings, like I say, are usually you know, right. Amorphous is the term I use. I don't know where it's not really a, a defined shape, but this to me, you know, even though it's not hard lines, seems like defined shapes. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Of like a petal, like a right. iris, iris flower, which is the one I know and love. So go ahead, tell us more about it. I don't want to do all the talking here. That's ten. 10 by 20, okay, and we'll, it's $50 also. $50. And it's all acrylic, and it's yellows, blues, whites. Uh, no enhancements or anything with, on, on there, it's right? Just a, uh, there's a pouring medium. Yeah, but no uh, crystals or anything. No. Like that. Tell you, this might be one that later. Well, you probably, I mean, this is a naive question by our novice. Like, if you did this, and let's say weeks ago, and everything, it was, it was finished as far as you're concerned, but then you came back and said, you know, some little crystals right really make that oh, pop. Can, can that be them. added Absolutely. or no? Absolutely. Oh, it can. So, yes. so somebody said, well, you know, Holly, I'd like that, but I'd like a little more depth on it. Somebody can, can you either, like I said, the thing I think would for this particular so upscale and refined would be like some crystals as yes. opposed to the nature stuff. Even the nature might be more natural. We're talking about flowers, right. but I think the crystals would really. Make it pop. Ooh. All right. What's the price on the bargain price before you put the crystals $50. on it? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Okay. Um, 
I, re I, I really like this one, folks. I can say I really see. I love florals, and even though they're probably one of the most common painted thing, and people dismiss them because I can't tell one from another. Everybody does florals, but this one is not a floral per se, but it resembles that, and it's just in great fresh spring colors that a flower like a uh, an iris, I mean a tulip would bloom in. All right, my true favorite abstract, real abstract, is our last one, folks. Uh, this one just blows my mind. Go ahead and tell me about this, and then I'll tell you why this I like it so This is acrylic paints okay. on canvas, okay. and um, it's a 12 by 12. Now, this is not a pour. This is not a pour. No, I, I, and, uh, uh, the background is white. So you did paint the whole background white, huh? different okay. tools to okay. get the different looks on here. Okay. No brushes. Is there any name or any inspiration on here? No. Okay. Well, I tell you, this one is just... Uh, you know, everybody, when they see a white background with a black abstract, they think of, there's a, a, a mental aptitude test called the Rorschach test, I think, you know, where there's all kind of pourings in different shapes. <laughs> well, that's a butterfly. The one person did something else. Uh, right. shows you how everybody sees differently. Sure. But, so that, you know, that gives you, first of all, that background, but at the same time, it's a much more refined technique. This is really, I think, just done spot on. Not an over excessive color using black and white because black and white, no matter whether you're a photographer or a painter, is always the most dramatic. No matter how many colors you can find in the world, new colors or enhance those, to me, there's nothing more dramatic than a black and white because whether it's in ladies' dresses, whether it's in photographs, or whether it's in paintings, that alone, at the same time, wouldn't be bad. It would just, you just done the black on here with the white, wouldn't be bad. Uh, but realizing to really make it pop you've got to add some colors and she gave the most popular color with black is and white is red and so she's got a little bit of that some linear lines down at the bottom she has some blues grays and i don't know if there's any other colors no. but notice it's all in like a brush stroke they're all like thin thin lines other than the center ones which are the big black ones which are larger at the bottom and just well-defined lines crisscrossing in life and uh, just making this white canvas I think like I said uh, no matter how much I like a lot of the other pieces this to me is my all-time favorite I mean really it really I just think uh, this is it should be uh, one of your defining pieces in whether your gallery showings or wherever always keep this as part of, even if you sell it always keep it as part of the uh, of the program because I just think it it is really popular. I think uh, it should extremely do well. Now tell us if this is a bargain or not. That's that's a big deal. Yes, it's twelve by twelve. Uh -huh. and it's forty dollars. Oh my lord! And I also have done work. Uh, I can't think of what you call it when people ask you to do different work. Commission. Commission work. Yeah, somebody I've done commission work, and I've did a big one like this also. Really? Oh, you see yeah. that. Today's work, and not that I want to diminish what you brought us today, but today the whole idea is it's a combination of more decorating for interior decorators. Right. But, uh, and it are because people can't afford, I mean, the ordinary person couldn't afford, not that yours is not affordable, but large pieces for every room in the house. It just, right. But the piece is used to actually fill the wall space. Mm -hmm. Now, instead of you putting multiple paintings up or gadgets, you know, or candle or any, any of the accessories to decorate a wall, you just take a white wall or one color wall and you put the largest piece of art you can. And that is a significant piece. So we call, call them monumental pieces. Mm -hmm. So everything is... And a good part of the trend in the last 15 and 20 years is toward monumental pieces. So the artist that does oversize, which in the old days people never, oh, who wants that big gaudy thing? Mm -hmm. Now just the opposite. Because of uh, price and because of the need, uh, people don't want to put a lot of stuff. It's minimal, no clutter. They want something that will stand out. So I can imagine, can you remember by any chance how big you made that particular one? This is 12 piece? by 12. Oh, no, no, 12 by 12. You said you, I thought you said someone um, asked you to make a larger one. It was around, I don't remember. Okay, okay. What is the large, can 20 you 20 by 20 maybe. You think that's the largest piece you, of anything you made, what is the largest piece you think? It doesn't have to be precise. Two feet, but uh, three feet, four feet or what? Yeah, probably around four feet. Four feet. Yeah, because that's, to me, uh, when we're talking about monumental, it has to be at least four to five feet. Right. Uh, if not square, then longer. Some of, them, uh, some of them almost take a whole wall. They're almost like eight 
10 feet long. You know, that's how big they've gotten. Right. But this piece, I think in a large, not that there's anything wrong with the 12 by 12, but in a larger scale. Yeah. I think phenomenal. I think would be a phenomenal addition to anyone's uh, portfolio, even if that's the only piece you buy. To me, uh, that would be just phenomenal for your house or your decorating. So that's what I'm trying to say, folks. I'm giving you a little trend here, even though I, I'm not an interior decorator, but I've noticed the trend is going toward oversized pieces in art okay, wow. and something like this. Yeah, and you don't have to have because you don't want a mural of a, uh, a farm scene like you do on a small painting. An abstract is the perfect thing because it, it leads you in so many directions. Right. Hey, okay. Bob, can I interrupt you for a second? Oh, that's our friend Mike, the producer. Yes, Mike, what's up? Uh, just let you know that uh, two people was in, uh, interested in the last two paintings. Uh, Wait, two people were interested in the last two paintings? The one, my, oh, see, they, I should have just said every one of your paintings is my favorite. Because <laughs> I'm three for three, right? Yes. All right. Who, uh, can you tell us a little bit more information about each one? Uh, the second to last painting. Uh, that was the yellow and blue, the, uh, calling it the tulips, even though there's no name. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, a guy named Wayne. Wayne, okay. And for the last one, uh, Teresa. For, uh, for the last one. Uh, yeah, my, my old one I've been bragging on. Uh, yeah, those are the last uh, people that... Uh, and who bought... Well, no, I didn't hear a name on that, did you? Teresa. Oh, Teresa. I'm sorry. My, my apologies, to <laughs> Teresa. It's just my <laughs> bad hearing. Thank you, Mike, very much. I know that makes both Holly and I very extremely happy. excited. Right, because, again, that's what... I mean, this shows for the exposure. So we're not trying to make... A, I mean, we'd love to make a sale on every piece, and we're not trying to... Uh, make the audience have to really dig deep in their pockets. If you find something you like here, we can give it to you the real way, the originals, or we can give it to you a print and an, at a bargain basement price. Okay, we're near the very end of the thing, so we got well, We appreciate Holly Liverday Cremins from New Orleans, or Metairie, our suburb, uh, who's doing a bang-up job, as you've seen. We really appreciate her work. Remember, you can contact her directly, Holly, H-O-L-L-I-E, K-R-E-M-E-N-T-Z, at gmail.com. I won't give the number anymore, or you can come Bob at rreview.com if you'd like to buy any of these after the fact or see it. We thank you for watching to us. As again, uh, I, I forgot what we got next week. Is it a nonprofit? I, anyway, my, I'm too old to remember. But uh, check us next week, and we'll see you soon. All right. Network.